Thank you. Would you believe I was almost homecoming queen in high school? Picture it. Football fields, fluorescent lights, Miss Congeniality on one side, Miss Best Dressed on the other, and me. I'm not talking about what's happened in the last six months where the first ever transgender homecoming queen was elected by a group of her peers and a homecoming king-to-be could not become because his driver's license said he was female and so the school district stopped it. I'm talking about 1997 where all I knew was that I was gay because Ellen DeGeneres was also gay and that made sense to me. I did not know the word transgender. I had no idea what I would become or what I could become. And these words, they matter. So let's look at some words. I call this social algebra. We do this equation all the time. For instance, me, I'm standing here, my gender in this transitive property, right? <laughs> this transitive equation. I'm standing here looking like a dude, right? And so we imagine that what's in my pants is what's in my pants. What hormones I have are what hormones I have. I have X's and Y's floating all through my blood. And that because we live in a world where everything is heterosexual until proven innocent, <laughs> that I must be a straight guy. Although I don't get many people thinking I'm a straight guy, which is fine with me. <laughs> all of these terms have a lot of values associated with them. Um, they are predicated on our opinions of disability, ethnicity, environment, religion, moment in time, culture, age, educational access, body size, place, race, economic class. There are as many definitions of sex, gender, and sexuality as there are people in this room. I'm willing to bet. Now, me, whoops, that's not it. Go to the next one. <laughs> Go to the next, to the next, there we go. Me, I identify as a female to male transsexual with a transgender queer identity. Hi. <laughs> we'll get to the story in a second. When I'm talking about sex, I'm talking about biology. Chromosomes, hormones, genitals, secondary sex characteristics, right? Simple. These are some words that you may have heard that describe sex, female, male, intersex. Intersex is a word that you may have also heard referred to as hermaphrodite. This is not an okay term to use. People who are intersex call themselves intersex and that is what we respect, right? Um, it, it is a condition where your chromosomes, your um, hormones, or your physical sex characteristics are different from males and females. And then there's transsexuals. Let's talk about moment in time. Some people tell me that I am oppressing myself by calling me a uh, transsexual. I just like the precision of it. I'm telling you that I am a female to male, right? I have gone from female to male, changing my sex characteristics with hormones and surgery. There are male to female, female to male, one way or the other, but you don't have to have surgery. You don't have to use hormones to be trans because trans is about gender and gender is about culture, society, and personhood, right? Um, in the culture, it's an expectation an expectation of a role you're gonna take. Socially, it's a presentation or a performance. Remember, I showed up, me, look, I'm, I'm a white guy, right? So you're either really into what I'm saying or you're kind of suspicious of what I'm saying or you're not really sure, right? Um, it's your perception and my performance. Does that make sense? Um, and the deal is, I know what my identity is, whether or not you see it. So I'm gonna give you an idea of, of what I'm talking about here. There's transgender, like me, and cisgender, like many of you. Cis meaning same, meaning that your sex and your gender match up. Cisgender people are not normal people, they are just common people. <laughs> Here are some other words that we've heard to describe gender. Man, woman, boy, girl, androgynous, metrosexual, uh, butch, femme, tomboy, sissy, I'll give you another word that showed up about eight years ago, gender queer. This is an oppositional term, right? It's a term that says, I'm not gonna go into any box you've made for me, thank you very much, enjoy the spectacle, okay? <laughs> Here are some more words to describe gender. I'm not gonna go through them all, <laughs> okay? You can look later. 
this term came around in the last couple of years. It's trans with an asterisk. I love this. You're reading along, right, and you see a word with an asterisk after it, and you look for the footnote. Guess what? This means I can write my own definition of what my journey has been. Love it. Let's go to sexuality. We're talking about attraction and behavior, right, which are not always the same thing. So some words that you've heard, gay, lesbian, bisexual, queer, right? Notice that transgender is not here, even though we talk about the gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, and queer community, GLBTQ, right? A transgender person can be gay, lesbian, bisexual, or queer, but it's different from their attraction and behavior. Here are a bunch of other words that describe sexuality. And I know I'm missing some here. And what I hate missing words, because if I miss out a word, what I'm telling you is that I don't value who you are. What I'm telling you is that who you are doesn't deserve a word. What I'm telling you is that you're invisible, that you don't get a community, that you don't get to be who you are in print. I know I'm missing a word. I hate it when I miss words. What's the word I'm missing? Oh, right, heterosexual. <laughs> I always forget that one. Let's go to my identity. Let's talk about me. Uh, so, as I told you, I'm a female to male transsexual. I have changed my sex characteristics through the use of hormones and surgery. I have a gendered experience of a transgender man because no matter how much of a man I become, I will always be a man who was on the homecoming court in high school and went to three debutante balls in a dress. All right? <laughs> let's say, though, let's just imagine that I'm hopelessly, madly, deeply in love with a cisgender woman. That's a woman who is female. When we get jiggy with it, are we lesbians? Are we straight? Are we queer? This equation doesn't work. It just leaves us with question upon question upon question upon question. But as a transgender person, I'm pretty used to questions. Uh, I started with the question that I'm pretty sure, I hope, every single one of you in this room has asked, right? Who am I? But when your answer to who you are shows that you are different in a way as fundamental as what gender is in our society, it leaves you with some more questions. Will my family disown me? Will my friends accept me? Will I be fired from my job? Will I be able to get a job? Will my marriage still be legal? Will I be able to parent my kids? Will, what will, will this cost me? Will I take hormones? Will I have surgery? Which surgeries? How do you change everything? Your birth certificate, your social security card, your passport, your credit cards, your diplomas. Which bathrooms can I use? Will my faith community expel me? What do I say in the airport? Will I be sent home for how I'm dressed? What will this cost me? Can I be all of myself? Will this affect my visa? Am I crazy? Do I pass? Who is going to love me? And then there's the questions that other people ask. There's only a few of them. Are you finished? Have you had the surgery? What's your real name? Are you fully transitioned? Should you be in this bathroom? What are you legally? What is it? These questions, they just make us other. But I take solace in all of those words. I love this representation of our equation because I think it more accurately reflects the way that we all probably experience our sex, our gender, and our sexuality. And I also think of it as like a crowd, if you all wore little definitions over your heads and I look down from above, right? It gives us so many opportunities to check the other box. And if we're all other, can any of us be othered? My moonshot? is to end gender. See, I've already been to the moon and back, and so have all the people in this little slideshow. We're living proof of how what you see doesn't have to be what you get, how sex does not have to equal destiny, how you can change and change and change again, and that is a rich life history, not something to be feared. 
or marginalized. I think about the way that in our culture we tisk and tut over other cultures where women have to pray in other spaces or eat in other rooms. And I think to myself, in our Western colonial secular culture, we just do that in our minds to one another. We create these invisible walls to slam up against, to keep people out, to box ourselves in. So ending gender would mean tearing all of those down. But I'm not necessarily advocating for revolution here. I mean, it could just be as simple as painting your toes, guys. You know? Ending gender would look like, well, it would look like getting to the root of what gender is. Isn't gender just a cry for beauty? What if we just let everyone be as beautiful as they want to be? What if we respected and celebrated whatever beauty is? What if we let go of our expectations, our limitations? Have you ever seen a man wearing high heels and men's clothing? I mean, a power shoe is a power shoe, okay? <laughs> Have you ever seen a debutante with a shaved head? A classic cut is a classic cut. If we let go of our expectations, if we let go of our limitations, that's what I'm talking about in ending gender. I'm not advocating for us all shaving our heads and wearing baggy clothing. I want us to be beautiful and I want us to be celebrated using all of the tools of gender, all of the tools of beauty that we have. It's not rocket science. Ending gender would mean advancing the use of a third pronoun, a gender neutral pronoun in English, Z and here. Z went to the store and bought here mom some shoes. Or if you like, for Z so loved the world, Z sent here only child. It's so powerful. And it includes so many more people in it. Ending gender would mean ending these words, these limiting words that never quite fit, these limiting labels. I mean, if it doesn't matter for the presidency, if it doesn't matter for the, for the Federal Reserve, if it doesn't even matter for health insurance anymore, would it kill you to go into a bathroom that's just like your bathroom at home that's not sex segregated? Would it grind society to a halt if my driver's license did not tell the cop pulling me over for speeding that I am a man or a woman? Ending gender means leaving us all with stories, so I'll leave you with a story. That last picture was of Royce, and I've known Royce for a very long time. In fact, Royce has known me so long, he knew me when I was Katie, the best girl babysitter ever. His parents explained, Katie is a man now, and he wants us to call him Scott. Do you have any questions? Royce replied, no, because we already have secret agent names for one another, and anyway, it makes perfect sense that he's always really been a boy, kind of like how at the end of Scooby-Doo, you know, when they pull off the mask? But he's brought his friend Elsbeth, and Elsbeth doesn't know me from anybody. She's just here for dinner and a movie, so right in the middle of building one last fort before dinner, Royce turns to Elsbeth and says, Scott used to be a woman, but now he's a man. A man! <laughs> then something occurs to him. He looks at me, he says, how did you do that? <laughs> Elsbeth looks horrified. It's not the gender confusion. I can read this very clearly. It's that at this point in her young Southern life, she's been trained not to point, not to stare, not to ask prying questions. Meanwhile, I'm confronted with the delightful opportunity of explaining transsexualism and gender identity to four-year-olds. Ah, <laughs> uh, how did I do it? Well, Royce, you see, I, I just, I really, really, really wanted it. I figured that was an age-appropriate response, right? <laughs> you do really, really, really have to want it. But I really, really want to be a girl, a woman, a woman! He says, unselfconscious and totally sure. So I take this moment to end gender. I just affirm the child. You want to be a girl? That's great. Believe the child. You know, you're perfect just the way you are. Love the child. What's a woman? <laughs> Look. 
I don't actually want to be having this conversation, okay? <laughs> A lot of people have a lot of opinions about transgender people being around children in general, right? And those things all went in. So I'm freaking out. I just want to put the kids inside the fort. I just want to go make dinner. I do not want to be having this conversation. But they're both staring at me so intently, so I say, what's a woman? <sighs> Amazing you would ask me that, Elspeth. Uh, a woman is, this is the first time this child has ever been taught gender. What am I going to say? A woman can be anything, and anyone can be a woman as long as she is smart and strong. Therefore, you, Royce, and you, Elsbeth, could each become women if that's what you choose because you're both both of those things. And you know what, Elsbeth? I think a lot of women would really like your shoes. <sighs> <laughs> what about my shoes, cries Royce. He's got these uh, sneakers that light up at the back. And I say, Royce, when I was a kid, when I was a woman, I had the exact same shoes. You see, women are all different, and so are all men. And there are even people who are different from women and men, and you can become whatever you choose. Let's think about it for a second. What could you be? A baseball player crane operator. They overlap. Exactly. Like I said, Ending gender means starting stories. And that's all I'm asking. Is that so revolutionary? Thank you. <laughs>